If you have your Bibles tonight, and you would open them with me to Luke, the seventh chapter. I'm just going to share a little word of exhortation that I hope will encourage you tonight. Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 19. Luke, chapter 7, beginning at verse 19. And we're just going to read through verse 22. And tonight, upon finding the text, if you'd stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word. And the Word of the Lord reads tonight, And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, meaning unto Jesus, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto him, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. Master, we thank you, God, tonight for your word. We just ask, Lord, tonight that your anointing and your presence would rest upon uh, this, fail, this frail frame, God, that I might deliver something that would be of benefit and help to your people. Strengthen us by reason of your word. Encourage our hearts. Help us, God, to leave this place on a higher spiritual plateau than we came in. Lift us up, Lord, today. Help our faith to be encouraged. Help our faith to be increased. Help us, Lord, to believe you for great things. For we ask it today in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Amen. John the Baptist had had an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ that probably surpassed anything that any human being would ever have in all of history. You see, a lot of us uh, have been taught the majority of our lives that the experience of John the Baptist in the baptizing of the Lord in the River Jordan was an experience that was shared with the entire audience that was there at the riverside that day. But if you look carefully, and I encourage you to do this, I'll teach on it one Thursday night so you can see. I'll point it out to you. If you look at every single instance where that story is told, you will find that it clearly states and John bear record that he saw the Spirit of the Lord descending in the form of a dove, and that he heard a voice. You see, God had already spoken to John and said, when the right man shows up, because all you're going to be able to see is a human being, and you're not going to know who's who. He said, but when the right man shows up on the scene, he said, here's how I'm going to seal the deal with you. Here's how I'm going to let you know who's who. He said, when you see the Spirit descending like a dove and landing upon him, he said, that's the man, that's the one, that's Messiah, that's the Christ, that's the one I've promised. So John was the only one who needed to see it. That's right, amen. Come on now, because it was a specific sign that God had spoken to John and said, this is what I'm going to do. Yes. And when you see this, when you see this, you'll know it's a right. You understand what I'm yes, saying? Amen. And John saw it. Everybody in the universe didn't see it. It was a vision. Now, we've got some people that tell us that God has to be three people because, after all, how can he speak from heaven and descend in the form of a dove by the Spirit and be in the water as a physical man, the Son of God, at the same time? Well, heavens to Murgatroyd, I don't know. Because the God I serve, see, is capable, Cheryl, of being in more than one place at one time. And he's capable of doing more than one thing at one time. So, I don't know. I guess the God some people serve, in order to do three things at once, has to be three people. Amen. But my God doesn't have to be three people. 
to do that. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's really quite simple. You know, uh, if I were able tonight, which I'm not, to separate myself, body, soul, and spirit, there would be three elements of me standing side by side, and yet there would only be how many of me? One. Because those three aspects are all part of my one spiritual being. They're all part of the one person, body, soul, and spirit. Amen? But you see, some people don't understand how God could manifest his soul, manifest his physical presence, and manifest his spirit all at one time. Amen. And I say, well... To me, it's not that hard to understand. I think it's pretty simple without having to cut them up and make them into three people. But John had experienced this. He had seen the sign that God specifically uh, told him of, and he was pretty sure he had the right guy. But at some point in his experience and in his life, as he neared the end of his life, all of a sudden he began to have questions and he began to doubt and he wasn't sure. You know, sometimes God can do the most wonderful, miraculous things for us, Cheryl, and then down the road a ways we forget all about it. Come on, man, we start to question and we start to doubt and we're not as sure as we were 20 years ago. Amen. One of the things that uh, fails God's people the most is our memory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because in reality, our faith would stand firm as a rock mm -hmm. if we could just remember. Mm -hmm. There's a song that says, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. If you just take a look at where you are now and where you have been, hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. Amen. Amen. If only we could remember. If only we would stop facing each experience as though it's brand new and we've never been there before. Yes. Cheryl, you've Amen. been there before. Amen. And God's always come through Amen. for you. Donna, you've been yes. there before. Amen. And God's always come through for you. Yes. Andy, you've been there before. And God's yes. always come through for you. Remember. Yes. Glory Amen. to God. It's not time to question. It's not time to doubt. It's not time to fear. It's time to stand on your memory. Hallelujah. Yeah. And say, Amen. I remember when I was facing a dire a, a time and a dire experience. But God brought me out. Hallelujah. Amen. If he could do it then, he'll do it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you see, John had begun to forget about his earlier experience. You know, especially as you face your mortality. When you face the end of your life, there are a lot of things you begin to question. My grandmother, as she faced the end of her days, I understand that she really had a struggle with her faith, and she really had to struggle with uh, an assurance in her heart that she was in a right place so that when she died, she'd stand before God in a good place. I'm going to tell you, folks, uh, and, and grandmother or no grandmother, I'm going to tell you this honestly. If you feel that way at the end of your life, there's probably good reason. Yes, amen. Hello now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because uh, she was the kind of person who judged everybody, criticized everybody, found fault in everybody. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. You might really despise people like that. I know I'm not crazy about them myself. Yes. I can live without them. Yes, of course, they're in plentiful supply in the church. You know, usually yes, it's about 90% of the average congregation. Yes, but, you know, I'm going to tell you a little secret. And maybe this will help you to, uh, to be a little more comfortable when, you're, when you run into folks like this. People like that, without fail are equally as hard on themselves. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. They just don't say it. Mm -hmm. Amen. When somebody is hypercritical and hyperjudgmental and hypernegative, I promise you that when they look in the mirror, they are every bit as critical and every bit as judgmental and every bit as negative. And part of the reason that they look around themselves and they speak all this negativity and all this criticism and all this judgment is because they feel so bad about themselves that the only way they feel they can elevate themselves is by knocking everybody around them down lower. Hello yes, now. Amen. Amen. And my grandmother was that way, I have to be honest with yes, you. Amen. 
and she constantly was knocking everybody around her down a peg so she could feel like she was up a peg. But in reality, if you could see in her spirit and see in her heart, she was every bit as judgmental and critical of herself. So that when the time came that she was facing her, morale, her mortality, all of a sudden, she began to fear. Oh God, I you know I I don't know what I'm going to face in the judgment. She didn't have that assurance. I remember when my aunt Laurel, my mother's sister, came to the hospital to see me, and I was lying in Yoma Haven Hospital dying, and the doctors threw their hands up in the air, didn't know what to do, had me on life support, said he won't last very long, so we're just trying to make him comfortable the best we can. And I'm going to tell you, Laurel came, and she asked me, she said, are you ready? And, uh, you know, are you, are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? And my answer was, yes, I'm ready. Hallelujah. You know why I was ready, Cheryl? Because I knew it wasn't about me. I knew I wasn't standing on my holiness. I knew I wasn't standing on my perfection. I knew I wasn't standing on how good I was. I was standing squarely in a pool of blood that flows from Calvary's tree. Hallelujah. I was standing on the blood of Calvary. I was standing on the blood of the Lamb. And my confidence and my faith was not ending in how good I could be or how holy I could be or how righteous I could be. My confidence and my faith was in what God had promised. My confidence was in the Word of God. My confidence was in the blood. And therefore, I was able to face my potential demise with absolute confidence and peace in my heart. I was ready. If God wanted to take me home, I was with Paul. For me to live as Christ... And to die is gain. Amen. It's only better if I go. Amen. Right. Amen. It's only better if I go home. So what difference does it make to me? One way or the other, which direction I go. Amen. Amen. But you see, folks, uh, when you get to the point where your mortality is right in front of your eyes, it will often make you begin to question some of your earlier experiences. It will kind of make you, because John was sent by God to perform an extremely important function. He, in the spirit of Elijah, was to proclaim the arrival of Messiah. Yes, amen. So that was, he couldn't afford to mess it up. He could not afford to die and maybe, possibly, maybe sort of have been wrong. You hear what I'm telling you? And he knew how important his mission was. Oh, by the way, let me share something else with y'all. For those, again, who believe that the Father and the Son are separate persons and separate individuals, let me help you understand something. My Bible tells me that John was a man sent by God. Yes, amen. Amen. Well, amen. It says that it was a man, it was a man sent from God whose name was John. Does that mean that John was an eternal being who lived in heaven before God sent him? No. It simply means that God had an audience with John, so to speak, and placed a calling on his life, and he sent him forth to do what he had been called to do. The same is true of the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He had a calling, and he had a, a mission that God put him on, but that does not mean that he had to eternally exist beforehand in order that he could be sent, quote, from God, because the Bible said John was sent from God. So that means if the Lord's an eternal being who existed prior, then that means John had to have been too. You see, the language sometimes, especially of the King James, the language can be a little bit confusing. But you see, the Word of God tells us that He is the only begotten Son of God. And in order to have been begotten, that means that He had to have had a start. He had to have a beginning. Amen. Amen. He said, this day have I begotten thee. In that manger, on that first Christmas morning, yes, God in heaven looked down upon that little child as the star of Bethlehem shone upon him. And he declared, this day I have begotten thee. Hallelujah. And you will be called the son of the living God. Yes, Glory to God. Amen. But you know, John began to question and John wasn't sure. He could not afford to face his death and not be absolutely certain that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. He was the Christ. He was the promised one from God. 
And because he couldn't possibly face his end without knowing for certain that he had fulfilled his mission and he had fulfilled his calling, he sent some of his uh, disciples to the Lord. And he had these disciples ask him, are you? Just yes, no games, no playing around. Yes, are you whom we seek or do we seek another? Yes, amen. amen. I'm going to tell you, a lot of people try to get their mind around Jesus and they try to get their mind around the nature of God and the person of God and they, they wrestle with all the theologies that have been thrown at them throughout their lifetime. And I'm going to tell you, I was born and raised in a church that doesn't believe the way I believe today. That's right, amen. Amen. Because if you're going to let tradition, and if you're going to let what you were raised in dictate what you believe today, my friend, you're foolish. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm sorry, you're foolish. Because where you start and where you finish aren't always the same place. Yes, they Amen. Can. As God shines more light upon your path, He expects right. you to walk in the light as you have the light. Right. He doesn't expect yeah. you to sit there and say, well, yeah, I, just, I see that, but you know what? I just choose not to walk there. I don't think I want to yeah. do that. I don't think I want to follow that. Well, I've got news for you. The Word of God declares, to him that knoweth to do good and does it not, yes, to him it is sin. Amen. When you see the light on something and you choose not to walk in that light, you're in sin. Amen. You're in darkness. You're not doing the right thing. Right. And my Bible tells me that no sin's going to enter in over there. Amen. Amen. So as God illuminates our path and shows us more light, He requires that we walk in it. But I had struggled uh, with the identity of the Lord for much of my life, and I, you know, I, I heard this argument over here, and I heard this one over here, and I was raised, you know, believed in one thing, and yet I, I saw what these people were trying to say over here. And I did not ask Andy. I love people that want to argue and debate, and they expect me to hand them the answer on a silver platter. A lot of people on the internet, you know, they'll write all that. They'll just want to debate with you till the cows come home. Amen. And they expect you to just hand them the answer on the So I got news for you. God didn't hand, I mean, nobody handed it to me, and I'm not going to hand it to you. Right. This morning we talked about the fact that the Lord said to Peter, who, you know, and to the other disciples, who do men say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right. And, she, and the Lord said, uh, Flesh and blood hath not revealed the Son of the living But my Father which is in heaven said, Peter, there's not a man on this planet that could right. hand you That's that revelation. Right. There's not a person on this planet that could simply Amen. hand you an understanding of who I am. That had to come from heaven. Amen. Well, I've got news for you today. Until you go to Jesus like John's Amen. disciples do and say, Are you That's this right. one Amen. or are we looking for somebody else? Amen. Right. Amen. I got to the place in my life where I went to God. Not to this preacher or to Amen. that preacher. Not to this theologian or to that theologian. Not to this believer or that believer. I went to God and said, Lord, I need to know the answer. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what God did. He opened my eyes, literally. Right. And I, man, I had a revelation that very night of who he Amen. was. And all of a sudden, I began to read the scripture. And, and Cheryl, it was so plain that, it, I mean, it could have reached out and slapped me upside my head. I couldn't believe how plain it was. All these years I was raised in one belief system, and they were so busy twisting Scripture and contorting it and making it say what they wanted it to say that I never saw what was right there in front of me in plain black and white. Amen. All of a sudden, God just opened my eyes, and I began to open my Bible and look through my Bible, and I'm reading, and I said, Jesus, I don't believe this. It says it's so plain. Yes. It says it's so clear, and somehow, all these years, I've been missing this. Yes, right. Amen. But you see, there's not a one of us tonight that doesn't need to do like John did, right. and go to the Lord and That's say, right. hey, Amen. I need to know. I need to know for absolutely certain. Yes, there are some who say you this, and there are some who say you that. I want to know, who are you really? Tell me, are you the one? Are you the one that I think you are? Are you really who I believe you are? Or is there somebody else I need to be looking at? Amen. And I want to tell you tonight that the Lord didn't even, the Word of God tells us, the Lord did not verbally respond to them. He just kept doing what He was doing. And during the course of the afternoon, He was healing people. 
and demoniacs were being delivered and lepers were being healed and all kinds of miracles were occurring and great things were happening. And finally, the Lord turns to John's disciples and says, I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to go back and tell John what you've seen and heard. That's right. Amen. I'm not going to give you a verbal answer. I'm not just going to say, yeah, I'm the guy. I'm the one you're looking for. No, 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 no. I want you to go back and tell John what you've seen and heard. I'm going to tell you tonight, my friend, the real evidence of Jesus' identity is in his actions. The real evidence of who Jesus is is in what Jesus did. Amen. I've got news for you today. There isn't a man on this planet that can walk on water, but my Jesus walked on water. There's not a man on this planet that can call a man four days dead out of his grave and call him back to life, but my Jesus called a man four days dead back to life. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? There is not a man on this planet. Listen, this is important. In our primary text tonight, you'll notice that the Bible said Jesus turned to John's disciples. And one of the statements he made was, he said, and the blind are given sight. Amen. Now, you listen to this. Here's a little revelation to give you some prickly goosebumps. He said, the blind are given sight. He did not say. The blinded eyes are restored. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh. He said the blind are given sight. Who else but God? Yes, they who else but God can give sight to the blind? Yes. Who else? He didn't fix what was broken. He gave them what they never had. Hallelujah. Yes. He didn't restore eyes yes. that didn't work. He gave them brand new eyes that did work. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He didn't say I fixed that, those blinded eyes. He said, the blinded eyes said, are given sight. Amen. Hallelujah. I've given the blind sight. Amen. Who else but God could do this? Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, John's disciples went back to him and shared with him what they saw and what they heard. And John knew immediately, yes, that experience I had at the Jordan that day was true. I've done my job. I have fulfilled my calling. I have honored God in everything that I've done. I haven't messed up. This was the right man. I did the right thing. Hello now. And how did he know? Because John was a devout man. John was a prophet. The Bible said the greatest prophet that would ever live. That's how Jesus described John. He said, no greater prophet than John has ever lived. But you see, when those, when those men, those disciples of his came back and told John what they had seen and heard, John, I just imagine him standing there with a big smile on his face. And I can just imagine him thinking for a moment, and then all of a sudden, the scripture verse kind of popped into his head. And he began to quote Isaiah 35, 3 through 6. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Now listen. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. And streams in the desert. Tell John what you've seen and heard. They went back and said, this is happening. And John said, then he's the right man. Because God said in Isaiah that he himself would come and save. He himself would come as our Savior. He himself would come. And when he did, blind eyes would be open. And when he did, deaf ears would be unstopped. And when he did, the lame would walk. Hallelujah. He said, when God shows up on the scene, you're going to 
see these miracles. When God himself appears on the scene, you're going to see these miraculous, wonderful happenings. Yes, amen. John said, yes, sir, that's the right guy. We, that's, I've been, <laughs> I did the right job. Amen. That's the right man. Because God himself declared, your God will come with a vengeance. I want to tell you something. When God comes to fix something, if somebody done you dirty, somebody's done you wrong, and God comes to fix it, baby, he's going to come with a vengeance. Do you hear me now? He's going to come mad. Amen. You don't want to tick off my daddy, devil. I've got news for you. You don't want to make my daddy mad at you. Because if you do, he's going to show up, and he ain't going to show up being all nice and sweet, That's he's right. going to tear you up. Amen. Because when my God shows up, he Amen. shows up with a vengeance. Amen. Hallelujah. When my God Amen. shows up, he shows up to save. Amen. Glory to God. And God Amen. declared time and time again in the Old Testament. He said, I am the Lord thy God, meaning Jehovah God. He said, and beside me, there is no Savior. If there's any saving to be done, I'll do it. Amen. Amen. If there's anything that needs to be done, I'll handle it myself. I don't send somebody to do something on my behalf or for me. I do it myself. Right. Amen. That's why the Word of God tells us in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul wrote and said, To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. That's right. Amen. Amen. God did it himself, Cheryl. He didn't send somebody to do it. He came and did it himself. He wrapped himself in a robe of humanity and did what no man could do. Do you know the Bible says, the word of God declares, no man can give his life for another man's soul. No man right. can offer his life for another man's soul. Well, I've got news for you. If that be true, then every one of us today is lost. If, he were a man. if Jesus were only a man. That's right. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? Right. The word of God tells us plainly, no man can do that. Well, if no man can do that, then how in the world could one man do it for all of the world, for the entire planet? How could it be? It's because he was more than a man. Amen. He was more than a man. He was God wrapped in humanity. He was divinity wrapped in humanity. Glory to God. There's an old advertisement they used to have on television years ago, if you remember. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll, uh, Tootsie Pop? You remember that? And the little owl, you know, he'd go one, two, and eat it up. And he'd get the gum in the middle, you know, or the tootsie roll. Well, you see, the reality is that was God. The divinity of Almighty God, the heart of God, was inside that man. We saw the man, but inside that man was something more. Which is why he was able to heal the sick and cleanse the leper and raise the dead. You see, those things weren't done simply because God was working with him. No, those things were done because God was working in him. And through him. Mm -hmm. Amen. When that little woman pushed her way through the crowd and got down on her hands and knees and made her way up and had in her mind, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. I'm here to tell you, my Bible tells me, and I know yours does too, Amen. that Jesus immediately sensed what? That virtue had gone out of him. Yes, amen. Now, see, Andy. If somebody wants to be healed and they get down on their fours and they crawl up and grab hold of the pant leg of my pants, I ain't got nothing that heals. Hello now. Now if they want to come up and they want me to pray for them and lay hands on them and believe God for them, I can do that. Because I am capable of serving as a conduit. Amen. God can work through me. Amen. But you see, it's a whole different thing when you're merely a conduit that God works through. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole different thing when the source of the power is within you. Mm -hmm. And all that little lady had to do was touch his clothes. Didn't yeah. even grab hold of his ankle. Didn't Amen. touch his leg. Didn't touch his foot. Yeah. Grabbed yeah. hold of his garment. And with all these people pressing in against him. The Lord said, wait a minute, who touched me? Yes, amen. Because somebody touched me believing. Yes, somebody amen. touched me with faith. Yes, somebody amen. touched me that needed something. Yes. Believing they would get it yes, if they right, could amen. touch me. How do I know? Because I felt the juice flow. Hallelujah. Amen. This 
was more than just a mere mortal man. This was something greater. Amen. This was God wrapped in humanity. Paul said, for without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. That's what Paul said. Now, of course, a lot of theologians immediately take that and try to rewrite it and re-script re it. Well, God the Son was manifest. That's not what he said. That's right. That's right. Amen. He said God was manifest in the flesh. Now, if you read in John, the first chapter, you'll read where John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he goes on to say, and he was in the world, and he created the world. Now, I don't know about you, but in my English class, when I was a kid, they taught me, Cheryl, that he is singular. Mm -hmm. It's not plural, it's singular. Yes, if you want to say plural, you'd say they. Uh -huh. You wouldn't say he. But you see, John wrote and said, he created the world, and the world knew him not. Didn't say they created the world, and the world knew them not. That's right, amen. And then when you look in the first chapter of Romans, God said that when they knew, when they knew God, they, uh, they did not honor him as God. Yes, amen. Meaning, when God was walking in their very midst, he was speaking of the Romans. He said, here are these people that had taken over our country, that were ruling us from Rome. He said, here are all these Roman citizens living in our land, and yet God was walking in the midst of them, and they never saw it. They never even realized it. They never even realized who it was they were looking at. Amen. Amen. But I want you to know today, I'm kind of like John. One day I went to Jesus and said, Lord, here's my understanding of this thing. You're God wrapped in human form. You're all of divinity. The Bible said that the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth in him bodily. It doesn't say that he dwells in the Godhead. It says the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. Amen. Amen. And the term Godhead, you know, a lot of theologians want to take that and you want to make that into something that it isn't. Sweetheart, the term in the Greek simply means that it, it all it means, it doesn't have anything to do with a triune God nature or anything of that state that all Paul was saying was that the fullness of divinity was in Christ bodily. Amen. That's all the term Godhead means. Yes. doesn't have Amen. anything to do with, you know, how many people make up God or how many. Amen. He was saying all the fullness of God dwelleth in him bodily. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you this, more to, this evening, whatever we need, our God is able. Amen. Jesus Christ did not come so that we could continue to suffer. Jesus Christ did not come so that we could continue to struggle. Jesus Christ came to reveal God to us. Amen. You know, I, I just love preachers and people that preach a Jesus who does not even begin to resemble the Christ of the Bible. Yes. Amen. You go into a lot of churches, and man, Andy, I don't know what Jesus they're preaching, but he doesn't sound nothing like the one I read about in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. Amen. You know, the one in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the most loving, accepting, Amen. positive, that, uh, you know, never condemned anybody. That's right. Amen. When it was common knowledge, when it was public knowledge, that they were sinful or that they had somehow failed or they had somehow committed some atrocity. When it was public knowledge, he still looked at them and said, Neither do I condemn thee. Yes, amen. Go and sin amen. no more. Amen. amen. I'm the God right. of a second amen. chance. Go on and try to do amen. better next amen. time. Amen. That's right. Now you know, you know how close you come to getting stoned this time. Well, sweetheart, let's try not to go down this road again. Hello now. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you today, you want to know who Jesus is, look at what Jesus does. 
Amen. You want to know today if Jesus is still who he said he was? I'll tell you what. Look at what he's still doing. Yes, look at what happens in his name. Amen. Look at what happens when people of faith use the name of Jesus. Right. Demons right. still tremble. Right. Demons right. still right. exit right. the lives of people they've oppressed and tormented. Sickness still flees. I'm here right. tonight as a living example Amen. of the power of Jesus' name. Amen. And I want you to understand tonight. You want to know if he is who he said he is? Then just look at what he does. Amen. Amen. Notice I didn't say, look at what he did. That's right, what he does. Look at what he does. Because he's still doing it, Cheryl. Amen. He's still Amen. doing it today. The name of Jesus still brings healing. The name of Jesus still brings deliverance. The name of Jesus still makes a drunkard into a respectable citizen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus still can wipe out addiction and cause someone who's been uh, addicted to drugs for years and years and years to suddenly find that they have absolutely no interest or any appetite for those drugs whatsoever. Right, amen. Going to tell you, you're going to try to tell me my God isn't real. You're many years too late. Yes, amen. I've seen God deliver too many people. Amen. I've seen God set people that were on a destructive path, and they were. Uh, it looked like they were going to uh, just destroy their lives. And I've seen God step in, and all of a sudden that person was so different and so changed and so uh, transformed by the power of God. Don't tell me my God isn't who he said he is. Because it's not a matter of what he did, it's a matter of what he does. Amen. He's still Amen. doing it today. Amen. I like that old song, and I'm closing with this. There's an old song that says, You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Amen. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. And you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter preached after the or preached. He declared after the healing of the man at the, the gate of the temple that was called beautiful. And Peter declared this same Jesus. Amen. He said, you want to know how this man's healed? He said, the same Jesus you crucified is the same Jesus who healed him today. You may not see him because he's no longer in the world in one physical person. Rather, today, he is by his spirit occupying every believer, everyone that's opened their heart and life to him. He's living inside of and living through today. So I've got news for you. This man's healing came by reason of this same Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, are you who we seek, or do we seek another? Just look at what he's doing. Amen. He's the one you're looking for. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you're at in your life. And there are people tonight that may be watching this message on the internet. And I want you to understand today, this Jesus is the one you're looking for. Amen. You may not even realize you're looking for him. Yes, but I'll tell you, when you find him, suddenly you'll realize that that's the thing that was missing. Yes, amen. Amen. There's a lot of people today that are fighting God and struggling. And I'm here to tell you tonight, give up and give in. Amen. Because God's going to win. Amen. 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 Give up and give in because God's going to win. Amen. I've got a baby brother that I love dearly. Yes. And I'll tell you, he's going through a lot of grief in his life tonight because he's fighting God and he's trying to run. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, you don't want to have to get to the bottom of the barrel yes, to finally look up. You hear me now? Amen. Amen. But understand, is he the one you're looking for? You better believe he is. Amen. Look at what he's doing in our world today. Look at what he's done for me. Amen. The old song says, look what the Lord hath done. Look what the Lord hath done. Amen. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He yes. saved me just in time. Amen. I want to tell you, when we sing that song, I feel it right down to the depths of my bones. There was a time in my life where I'd sing these kind of songs, and I didn't identify with, He healed my body. Yes, amen. Like I do today. Yes, amen. But I'm going to tell you, He is who you're looking for. Amen. amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Amen. amen.